I think it's time. I'm going to have to say it's time to put the counter flames, at least in the top five, as legitimate Stanley Cup contenders. You know what I mean, as it's time for another episode of... Hi there, it's Brett Hornby here, and welcome back to another episode of my Calgary Flames in 6. This is Season 4. Now we're up to Episode number 10. As we'll talk about Games 49 to 54 in the 2021 22 NHL regular season. And if you leave off from the last episode, the Calgary Flames were working on a 9-game winning streak. As they've been making hay at home. I'm going to say they weren't perfect in this episode, like last episode, where they were able to collect 12 out of possible 12 points from looking at six game recaps. I'm going to say 10 out of 12 is not too shabby, and I'm going to say it is time to start considering the Calgary Flames Stanley Cup contenders for 2022. At least, definitely a favorite to at least come out of the West. So before I bring my notes and let's talk about the past six games, if you want to follow along this Calgary Sports fan's journey, just uh, make sure you hit like, subscribe, and my uh, other social links down in the description below. And I do have a second channel in Brett Hornby Shorts, so I put my short form content exclusively on there. So I appreciate like, subscribe both here on my main channel as well as my second channel. So bring my notes. Let's talk about how the last six games went. For the Calgary Flames, I guess I kind of let some of the cat out of the bag and say we collected 10 out of a possible 12 points. But this is how we sliced it together. So game 49, this was happened on Monday, February the 21st, as the Calgary Flames were hosting the Winnipeg Jets. This was a 2 p.m. puck drop at the Scotia Bay Sound. This was Family Day Monday. This game also is a couple things where... It wrapped up a seven-game homestand that the Calgary Flames were perfect. 6-0 on up to this point, and this game also got rescheduled from Friday, December 31st, from all those games being postponed. So how did this game go against the Winnipeg Jets? Well, first period, there was actually no scoring in the report. There was no scoring. However, the shots and goal were still favoring Calgary. 11 to 8, and there was also no anything that stood out in terms of anything fisticuffs and that. So it was kind of a feeling out afternoon game. There was no scoring to report as it was nothing, nothing. Going into the second period, early in the second period, the Calgary Flames opened up the scoring actually very early in at a minute seven seconds in to the second period. It was Sean Monahan who scored on the power play his eighth of the season to make it one to nothing for Calgary at that point. However, Winnipeg did tie it up a little later into the second period as it was Dominic Tornado who got his fifth of the season at the 7.39 minute mark. So now the game is all tied up at one to one and that's actually how things stood. After the second period, the game tied at 1-1, to however, I'm going to say the Calgary Flames were the better team looking for their 10th straight win. In the third period, it stayed tight. It stayed tight the whole game, not until the final minute of the third period. It still looked like that I was going to say this one needs overtime. However, it was Elias Lindholm. He had other plans. He did not want me to say this one needed overtime. As at 19:13 of the third period, Elias Lindholm scored the go-ahead goal at 19:23 to make it two to one for Calgary, and Tyler Toffoli puts it in the empty net for his 11th of the season combination between Calgary and Montreal at 19:49. So ultimately, the Calgary Flames did indeed win their 10th straight game by defeating the Winnipeg Jets three to one, and that tied a franchise record for most consecutive wins. I did actually already make a video talking about the other 10th Street wins that the Flames franchise made. This was the first time the Calgary Flames won 
10 in a row since the 2016-17 season. Second time in Calgary because in 1978-79 the Atlanta Flames won 10 in a row. So as I say, the Calgary Flames won this one 3-1. And they also shot the Winnipeg Jets 31-23 overall. So leading the way for the Calgary Flames. No one had a multi-point game. However, when it comes to the goaltending story of the game, it was Jacob Markstrom. He made 22 saves for Calgary. Well, it was Connor Hellebuck. He had a pretty good game himself. Made 28 saves for the Winnipeg Jets. The other thing that I also found hilarious in this game that I got to put out there is after the game, Daryl Sutter had his press conference, his post-game press conference, and someone asked him about cushion and cushion in the standings. And that was the game when Daryl Sutter said a cushion is just a pillow of feathers. And every time you lose, you take a couple of feathers out, and eventually you don't have any cushion and a pillow to sleep on. So I just found that hilarious how he just said that. But this also swept a seven-game homestand. Apparently it was the first time in NHL history where a team actually swept the homestand of more than six games. So Calgary Flames... They are definitely heating up, which gets back to the opening on why I think it is time to consider the Calgary Flames at least a top five stack of contender. So that was game number 49. So game 50, this happened on Thursday, February 24th. The Calgary Flames went on the road to take on the Vancouver Canucks at the Rogers Arena 8 p.m. puck drop. Did the Calgary Flames make it 11 in a row? Spoiler alert! No, they didn't. Excuse me. Uh, something crawled in my throat there. They did not, unfortunately. It's just like the uh, first, the previous game, there was no scoring to report in the first period, and it looked like the Calgary Flames had things their way with the Vancouver Canucks, but it was a nothing nothing game going into the second period. And also, they had the Vancouver Canucks, they were also wearing their skate jerseys in that game. Now, going into the second period, uh, I guess I gotta do this. Going to the second period, Vancouver did open up the scoring on the power play as the Calgary Flames got into some penalty trouble. It was Lars Patterson who got his 15th of the season at 342 to make it 1 0 for Vancouver. Not so bad. However, later in the second period, JT Miller, also on the power play, scored his 19th of the season at 10 18, so that was 2 0 for Vancouver. However, Bo Horvat, he scored for Vancouver at the 10.50 mark. So literally just 32 seconds later after the JT Miller's goal, Bo Horvat scored to make it 3-0 for Vancouver and actually chased out Jacob Markstrom in that, placing Dan Vidar just to sell things up. However, there was still more carnage to go. From the Vancouver Canucks, it wasn't until in the last minute and a half Vancouver added a couple more goals. Bo Horvat decided he wanted to score again, and this time on the power play as he got his 17th of the season, second of the game at the 18:42 minute mark to make it four to nothing for Vancouver. And then J.T. Miller said, "Hey, I also want to score again too." So he scored at the 19:55 minute mark, so literally five seconds left in the second period, second of the game, 20th of the season to make it five to nothing for. Calgary, and suddenly it's not looking like Calgary's going to uh, win their 11th game on the row. So definitely it was not a good period for the Calgary Flames as they got into penalty trouble. And the Vancouver Canucks also took advantage. I should also mention that that JT Miller's second goal of the game was on a penalty shot as Rasmus Anderson got caught by closing the his hand on the puck in the crease, so it was a penalty shot goal that JT Miller scored. Just want to put that out there. By the way, no matter how I paint it, it was 5 0 for the Vancouver Canucks going into the uh, third period. So at least did the Calgary Flames uh, salvage something in the uh, third period, shall I say? Well, not too much to go because going into the third period, it was Connor Garland. Who scored his 14th of the season at 4:33 to make it six to nothing for Vancouver? And then Elias Patterson, he decided he also wanted to score 
Two goals in this one. He got his second of the game. 16 of the game. Short-handed to add an insult to injury. So Vancouver took a 7-0 lead at that point. But at least the Calgary Flames, they at least were able to get on the board. As it was Andrew Maggiapone who scored his 26th of the season. This was at the 17:53 minute mark to make it 7-1. So at least we got a single after the BC Lions scored a touchdown. The Stampeders were able to muster a single. All seriousness, this was a hockey game where we got blew out badly. As the Vancouver Canucks, they definitely had their way with the Calgary Flames as they defeated the Flames 7-1. Also going to say, Johnny Goudreau, I'd like to know what he did to get a misconduct in this game. As Johnny Goudreau, he got a good game misconduct. I wonder, did he fart? Did he say anything? Because that's the first time I saw that. So it was that kind of game. And of course, uh, Tanner Pearson, Andrew Mosbjani. Had high sticking, and Leon Lucic also took him to Stonic. It was definitely an ugly game for the Calgary Flames. However, I'll chalk this up, but it was one of those games that every team has. And unfortunately, it just stung at the fact it was on a 10-game winning streak. Apparently, this was also the first time in NHL history that a team that ended a team who had a 10-game winning streak by scoring six or more goals over their opponents. So, uh... History made, actually the Calgary Flames started their 10 game winning streak against the Vancouver Canucks and then it ended big time against the Vancouver Canucks. Shots in net were 38-30 for the Vancouver Canucks. So leading away for the Vancouver Canucks, well you had three players that scored two goals. We obviously had uh, Elias Patterson, or Elias Peterson, trying to tell you here, I've heard it both ways. He had two goals and an assist for three points. And then Bo Harvat had the two goals for the two points. And then JT Miller, he had two goals and two assists for four points. So that's who was led the way for the Vancouver Canucks. So when it comes to the goaltending story of the game, as I mentioned, Jacob Marks made 18 saves for Calgary, a lot of three goals, and then he got chased out of net. So Dan Vidar played the rest of the way. He made 13 saves on 17 shots. While Thatcher Demko, he was in for the whole game. He made 29 saves for the Vancouver Canucks. So essentially, we could just throw this game away. That was a one-off. But that was game number 50. Let's move on from that. So game 51, this happened on Saturday, February the 26th. As the Gavin Flames were wrapping up February. This time they were back at home, taking on the Minnesota Wild. This is a home-and-home -home because the Calgary Flames have a game against the Minnesota Wild on the road after this one, but this one, as mentioned, it was at home. Scotia Bay Saddle, 8 p.m. puck drop on Hockey Night in Canada. Did the Calgary Flames forget the carnage in Vancouver in this one? I'm going to say they did. However, things did not start off good early, as it was another Goudreau. No relation to Johnny. This is Frederick Goudreau, and actually, I think Frederick Goudreau, if I'm not mistaken, he's from Montreal. Well, Johnny Goudreau is from New Jersey. Yeah, this is the guy who's from Quebec. So Frederick Goudreau opened up the scoring for the Minnesota Wild at 136 in. He is seventh of the season to make it 1-0 for Minnesota. However, Calgary was able to get back into this game later into the first period as it was Tyler Toffoli who sided up for Calgary. He got his 12th of the season at the 10-29 mark. Of the first period, they tied up at 1-1. And then Matthew Kachuk on a power play scored to make it 2-1 for Calgary. He is 25th of the season at 11:49. And then suddenly, when did Eric Branson, when did he say he could score goals? Well, he got his fourth goal of the season at 17:42 of the first period. So after Frederick Goudreau opened up for the scoring for the Minnesota Wild, the Calgary Flames scored for three of their own in the first period to make it 3-1 to one. and that's how things stood after the first period. Actually the Calgary Flames really 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 dominated the Minnesota Wild in the first period of out shooting them 18-4. So that is the first period. So going into the second period the Calgary Flames did score a couple more goals however much much later in the period. Also Kirill Kaprizov and Matthew Chuck definitely got in each other's uh, 
grills in this one. Kirill frees off the skilled Russian forward from the Minnesota Wall that might actually make the Wall a more exciting team to watch in the future. But Matthew Kachuk, he definitely was introducing himself to the game in this one. But Calgary actually added a couple more goals in this one. First, it was Andrew Mangiapane who got his 27th of the season. This came at the 16:44 minute mark of the second period to make it 4-1 for Calgary. And then Calgary made it 5-1 on a short-handed goal. It was Blake Coleman who scored it in 19-19. He is 11th of the season to make it 5-1. And the Calgary Flames took a 5-1 lead after the second period. Despite the Minnesota Wild coming back stronger in the second period, out shooting the Calgary Flames 14-8. So now going into the third period, well, the Minnesota Wild definitely tried to uh, make things a little interesting. First, it wasn't until the 13-25 minute mark of the third period, it was Nick Bustad who got his fifth of the season to make it a 5-2 game for Calgary at that point. And then speaking of Kaprizov, well, he did score in this one. Kyle Kaprizov did score at the 14-35 minute mark. So a minute 10 later, after the Nick Bustad goal, his 24th of the season, to make it 5-3 for Calgary at that point. However, Calgary wasn't able to put it away with a couple of empty netters. First, it was Matthew Gajuk, who got his second of the game. Yeah, no, his first, of the, second of the game, as you meant to say. 26th of the season at 18.06 in the empty net. And Tyler Toffoli also got his second of the game. 13th of the season at 1918. So Calgary, I'm going to say, did rebound after being destroyed against the Vancouver Canucks by taking it out against the Minnesota Wild with a 7 to 3 win. So Calgary ultimately outshot the Minnesota Wild 35 to 25 in this one. As I mentioned, Kirill Kaprizov and Matthew Chuck definitely had a lot of battles in this game. And also, so was it Brad Richardson. So Kirill Kaprizov, he definitely likes to get into trouble too by the looks of it in this game. So leading the way in this one, well, it was uh, Matthew Chuck who had uh, two goals and one assist for three points. So did Tyler Toffoli with two goals and one point for three assist. One, point, one assist for three points. And then Blake Coleman had a goal and assist. And then Preston Patterson also chipped in with... Uh, Two assists leading the way for the Minnesota Wild. Nobody had a multi-point game. So when it comes to the goaltending story of the game, it was Jacob Marstrom. He made 22 saves for Calgary. While it was, uh, what's his goalie's name? It was Kapo Kakuinen. If I said it right, he made 28 saves for the uh, Minnesota Wild. So the Calgary Flames definitely wrapped up February. Going 10-1. With a 7 3 win against the Minnesota Wild. So that was game number 51. Game 52, this happened on Tuesday, March the 1st, as the Gagger Flames were taking on the Minnesota Wild again. This was a home and home back to back, but this time it was in Minnesota at the XL Energy Center. This was a 6 p.m. pup drop. So, how did the Gagger Flames do against the Minnesota Wild? in Minnesota, shall we say. Well, I'm going to say it was a little more of the same. If you're a Calgary Flames fan, and that means you like it. Well, it was Matthew Chuck who actually did score early in this game on a power play. He is 27th of the season. This was at the 112 minute mark of the first period. So Calgary took an early one nothing lead in this one. And then Nadir Mangiapane got it 2-0 for Calgary as he scored his 28th of the season at the 12.42 minute mark. So Calgary had a 2-0 lead going into the second period, up 2-1 or 2-0. Minnesota did have the slight edge in shots for much of this game, but the Calgary Flames definitely answered back. Also, there were a couple uh, fighting to talk about. In the first period for move on second period, it was Nikita Zadorov who had a fight with Ryan Hartman the Minnesota Wild. At 1348, and then Brandon DeMalm and Matthew Gajuk, they said, how are you doing at 1921 without sportsmanlike conduct? So uh, definitely not the first time that they're going to be beating each other in this game. So Brandon DeMalm and Matthew Gajuk had unsportsmanlike conduct. 1921 of the first period, 
maybe it was all the how he did with Kapriel Kaprizov that carried over. So I guess after all that, Calgary still had a 2 nothing lead going in the second period. So going in the second period, it was Mick Falingo who got Minnesota on the board. His 18th of the season at 8.32 to make it a 2-1 game for Calgary at that point. However, Elias Lindholm, actually 21 seconds later, put Calgary back up by two as he scored his 27th, 24th of the season, I meant to say, at 8.53 to make it 3-1. And that was all the score in the report as Calgary took a 3-1 lead. More rough stuff to rough stuff to highlight. They had Brandon Knight and Matthew Kachuk. They had a roughing at 13.56, so I guess they wanted another round after the uh, sportsmanlike conduct because he was also holding against uh, Oliver Shillington. And yeah, that's all it for you for rough stuff. So things definitely settled down for that after the second period. So going to the third period, there was some more offense. From the Calgary Flames, Walter to fully scored on the power play early in the third period. His 14th of the season, 33 seconds in on the third period. He's definitely been a nice pickup for the Calgary Flames, getting him from the Montreal Canadian. So that made it 4-1 to for Calgary at that point. And then Michael Backlund put it away in the empty net as Minnesota pulled the goalie with a couple minutes to go in the third period. But Michael Backlund put it away in the empty net at the... 17-30 minute mark of the third period is eighth of the season for Calgary to take a 5-1 to one lead and ultimately the Calgary Flames won this one 5-1 to one, so they swept the home and home back to back against the Minnesota Wild. So when it comes to shots in this game, the Minnesota Wild actually had a slight edge as they have shot the Calgary Flames 33-27. to 27. So leading the way for the Calgary Flames, so Michael Backlund had a goal and assist for two points as well as Magic Chuck and Elias Lindholm, Tyler Toffoli, and Andrew Maggiapani. And another player with two assists was Johnny Gidra. So there definitely were points to go around. So when it comes to the goaltending story of the game, Jacob Markstrom definitely had a good game, as he made three two saves for Calgary. Well, for Minnesota, hey, this name might sound familiar. Can't tell, but he made 22 saves for Minnesota on 26 shots. So Calgary started off March with a line with a win, if you could say that, with a 5-1 to one win over the Minnesota Wild. So that was game number 52. So game 53, this happened on Thursday, March the 3rd, as the Calgary Flames were home to take on the Montreal Canadiens. That was the 7 p.m. up drop. Also the first time that the after the restrictions got lifted, so, first time we could have a full sea of red. And also, even though the Calgary Flames could not extend their winning streak to 11 games, Calgary at least had a chance to extend their home winning streak to 12 games in this one, and thinking that should be pretty easy against the Montreal Canadiens. However, the Montreal Canadiens, I'm going to say, had other plans, or the Montreal Canadian, as I always like to say. So, going into the first period, well, Things actually start off good for the Calgary Flames, as it was Blake Coleman who got his 12th of the season. We'll open up some scoring at the 11.06 minute mark to make it 1-0 for Calgary. However, Jeff Petrie, he scored his 4th of the season at the 1954-1934 minute mark of the first period within the last minute to tie up the game at 1-1. So the game was tied at 1-1 after the first period, and the Montreal Canadiens actually had a Big first period in outshooting the Calgary Flames 16-9. So the Calgary Flames looked a little flat considering where the Flames are in the standings and the Montreal Canadiens are. Going to the second period, though, things were looking a little better as it was Johnny Goodrow who scored his 21st of the season at the 12-08 minute mark of the second period. So Calgary took a 2-1 lead at that point. And then Calgary added to their lead with a shorthanded goal as it was Andrew Mangiapane who got his 29th of the season at 15.40 of the second period. So now Calgary took a 3-1 lead at that point. However, Montreal did strike back into the later part in the second period as it was Nick Suzuki on the power play. He got his 12th goal of the season at the 17.44 minute mark of the second period. So we had a 3-2 game for Calgary going into the uh, 
third period, and there was uh, there was no fight in this one too highly in the uh, first period or the second period. So going into the third period, definitely was a wild one, I would say. Definitely got you on the edge of the sheet. Sheet is what I meant to say. So going into the third period, it was Montreal who ties up the game, as was Ben Chirot who got his second of the game. And this was at the, or first of the game I should say, he did eventually get a second in the game at an inopportune time. The sixth of the season, this was at the 4.38 minute mark, to tie up the game at three apiece. Then the Montreal Canadiens, they took a lead late into the third period, as it was Mike Hoffman who got his tenth of the season. This was at the 17.50 minute mark. So Montreal took a fourth lead. Going into the final minute of the third period, or Elias Lindholm, he actually did tie up the game at four apiece at 19.32 on a wrist shot to make it four to four. So this time, Elias Lindholm wanted me to say, and this one needed overtime. Going in overtime, well, I kind of let the cat out of the bag when I mentioned about Ben Sherratt. He did get his second of the game as he did score the overtime winner at 103. So ultimately, the Montreal Canadiens, they played a little bit of a spoiler. As they won this one 5-4, to four. Calgary Flames were able to muster a point, but that ended the home winning streak at 11. So the Calgary Flames were not able to make history on this game. Montreal Canadiens also had a slight edge of shots by outshooting Calgary 35-34, including 2 to nothing in overtime. So ultimately, how the season series went is the Montreal Canadiens actually beat the Calgary Flames both times. As Montreal beat Calgary 4-2 in Montreal back on November 11th. And then the 5-4 in overtime at home. Interesting to say, consider where the Montreal Canadiens are in the season. But they have been playing a lot better as they change coaches from Don Ducharme to Martin St. Louis. And yes, Martin St. Louis is always going to have a chip on his shoulder when it comes to the Calgary Flames. So leading the way for an old multi-point getter for the Calgary Flames. But there were definitely a few for the... Montreal Canes, Ben Chirot, obviously with the two goals and assist for three points. Nick Suzuki had a goal and two assists for three points. And Mike Hoffman, he had a goal and three assists for four points. So when it comes to the goal to story of the game, Jacob Markstrom, he made 30 saves for Calgary. When it comes to the Montreal Canadiens, it was recently acquired Andrew Hammond, the Hamburglar, who got from the Minnesota Wild. He made 30 saves for the Montreal Canadiens. So the Le Montreal Canadian got the better end of the Calgary Flames for game number 53. So game number 54 to wrap up this episode before we move on to other business. This is a big test and should we dare say maybe a potential Western Conference final preview as the Calgary Flames went back on the road to take on the Colorado Avalanche. First time the Flames and Avalanche meet the season. This was an 8 p.m. pop drop at the Ball Arena. That's, just, that's the name of the arena they call it now. So how did the Calgary Flames fare against the Colorado Avalanche for their first really big test to see if we are legitimately Stanley Cup contenders? However, things did not start off good. For the Calgary Flames, that was Gabriel Landeskog who scored 42 seconds into the first period to give Colorado a 1-0 lead right away to set the tone. However, Elias Lindholm answered back on the power play at 229 of the first period to make it a 1-1 game. However, Colorado did strike back again. Once again, this was on the power play for Colorado as it was Andre Barakowski, if I said the name right. Yeah, Andre Barakowski, who got his 18th of the season. This is at the 1818 minute mark of the first period. So Colorado took a 2-1 lead at that point. However, Elias Lindholm got his second of the game, second in the period at 1927, 1924 is meant to say, to make it 2-2. So the Calgary Flames and the Colorado Avalanche were tied at 2-2. So this game was shaping up to be a pretty good game, I shall say. And the Calgary Flames also were out shooting the Colorado Avalanche for the first period 14-9. So Calgary was looking up, I should say, taking on the top team in the Western Conference. So going into the second period, Eric Branson. Since when did he score? Well, 
He got his fifth of the season at the 121-27 minute mark of the second period of the slap shot. To make it 3-2 for Calgary, well, maybe Jer Bednar was thinking that too because after that goal by Eric DeBranson, it was Darcy Kemper who started in that, got chased. So Darcy Kemper got chased in this one. And keep in mind, it was Dan Vidar who got the start in that for the Calgary Flames, giving Jacob Markstrom some time off. So maybe this could also solidify our tandem even more. However, Calgary's still up 3-2 at this point. Reality struck once again for the Calgary Flames as it was Nathan McKinnon who scored his 17th of the season at the 9.40 minute mark of the second period to tie up the game at 3-3. And that's actually how things stood after the second period. The game tied up at 3-3. Third period, there was definitely a lot of back and forth in this one. There was no scoring to report as the Colorado Avalanche, I'm going to say, had the slight edge of play. But Dan Vidar stood tall in net. So with the game still tied up at 3-3, this one needs overtime. And going into overtime, it was ultimately Johnny Goodrow who scored a highlight reel goal for the Calgary Flames, his 22nd of the season. 30 seconds, 7 seconds in, and ultimately the Calgary Flames won this one 4-3 in overtime. So, yep, the Calgary Flames take this one 4-3 in overtime in Colorado against the top team in the Western Conference. This is where I'm going to start saying we are legitimately Stanley Cup contenders. And also I should mention, I guess I kind of lied, Calgary only collected a possible 9 out of 12 points because they gave one up against the Montreal Canadiens at 2, so they collected 9 out of 12. I'm thinking too far ahead of myself, but it's still pretty good for a 6-game recap. And ultimately, say the Calgary Flames outshot the Colorado Avalanche 31-36, to 36, including that one shot in overtime. There was also a fight I should highlight in this one, as in the second period of Milan Lucic fought Curtis McDermott, but if this game was a potential Western Conference Championship preview, I'm looking forward to it. And then the fact that 2019 can be a storyline, hopefully the Calgary Flames can put up a fight, this time with the Colorado Avalanche. So laying the way in this one for the Calgary Flames, well... Johnny Goudreau with the overtime winner also had two assists for three points. Matic Chuck had three assists. Elias Lindholm had two goals and one assist for three points. One thing else that stood about Elias Lindholm is that he got burned on the Colorado Avalanche second goal, but then he redeemed himself by scoring that second goal. So he definitely bounced back on a couple defensive plays, but Colorado is definitely a very, very talented team and deep, which I'm going to still say this will make a great series if we do play them in the conference championship, if both teams get there. Leading away for Colorado, it was Valerie Stuskin, who had two assists, as well as Nazem Kadri had two assists as well. So when it comes to the uh, goaltending story of this game, well, Jacob March, actually, no, no, Dan Vidar. I keep used to saying Jacob March, it was Dan Vidar. It wasn't that he made 33 saves for Calgary, while for the Avalanche, well, Darcy Kemper only made 12 saves on 50 shots before he goes replaced by Pavel Francouz, who made 21 saves on 22 shots, but he allowed that overtime winner. So ultimately, he gets credited for the loss. So after 54 games, the Calgary Flames are 33, 14, and 7 for 73 points, and that puts them first in the Pacific Division. So if we take a look at the stats and standings, shall we? So the top five scorers for the Calgary Flames right now, Johnny Goudreau in 54 games, he has 71 points with 22 goals and 49 assists. Matthew Kachuk is second in scoring after 54 games, he has 64 points, 27 goals, 37 assists. Third in scoring is Elias Lindholm in 54 games, and he has 57 points, 27 goals, and 30 assists, and then Andrew Mangiapane, after 54 games, he has 41 goals, points, for 29 goals and 12 assists. And then Rasmus Addison rounds up the top five in 54 games, he has two goals, 29 assists for 31 points. So now when it comes to the uh, goaltending story for the Calgary Flames, so Jacob Markstrom 
played 43 games. He is 25, 11, and 6 with a 217 goals against the average and a 925 save size with 8 shutouts. Yes, I said 8 shutouts, too short of uh, Kemper's record. Well, David R. For a backup, he's played in 13 games, started 11. Vega Markson started 43. David R. is 8, 3, and 1. His goals against the average is a 287 and a 904 save size with two shots. So I'm looking our tandem, shall I say? So now when it comes to uh, let's take a look at uh, some more stats, shall we? As we'll look at some league leaders as I'll bring up the app. Let's just take a look at the league leaders while we're at it. As I'll get there. So the goal scoring leader right now for the NHL. Is Austin Matthews with 39, Leandro Eisteidel and Chris Kreider each have 38, while Alexander Veskin has 34 and Kyle Connor has 33. So that is your leading goal scorers when it comes to assists. When it comes to the NHL, it was Jonathan Huberto who leads the way with 58 assists. Connor McDavid second with 50. Third is actually Johnny Goodrow. He is third in the league with 49 assists, and then. Asim Kadri and you suck Fox, Adam Fox, tied for 48 in comes to uh, assist. We have to say that with Adam Fox, because he did not want to play here. So that's just a quick uh, points. Now we'll look at the points when it comes to the uh, NHL while we're here. As the leading point getter right now is a tie between. Leon Dreisel and Connor McDavid both up the road at Empton with 79 points. Jonathan Huberto is third in the league with 76. Jonathan Good or Johnny Goodrow, he is fourth in the league with uh, 71. So he may be within the Art Ross race when it comes to Johnny Goodrow. And Austin Matthews, Kapil Krizov, and Ezra Kadri are tied for fifth with 70 points. So that is the quick. Uh, Stats. So now let's take a look at the standings, shall we? So when it comes to the uh, standings, so if you look at the division, well, the Calgary Flames are first. They have 73 points in 54 games. Second place is the Los Angeles Kings, 69 points in 57 games. Third place is the Vegas Golden Knights. They have 68 points in 57 games. Fourth place is the Edmonton Oilers, 64 points in 56 games. Fifth place is the Anaheim Ducks. They have 63 points in 58 games. Sixth place is the Vancouver Canucks. They got 62 points in 57 games. Seventh place, San Jose Sharks. They have 55 points in 56 games. And then the Seattle Kraken run up the Pacific Division. They have 39 points in 58 games. Central Division. Colorado Avalanche lead the way. They have 85 points in 56 games. Second is St. Louis with 71 points in 55. Third is Minnesota, 67-54 games. Fourth place is the Dallas Stars. They have 67 points, 55 games. Fifth place, National Predators, 66 points, 55 games. Sixth place is the Winnipeg Jets, 58 points, 55 games, 56 games. Seventh place, Chicago Blackhawks, they have 48 points, 57 games. And then running out the Central is the Arizona Coyotes. They have 36 points in 55 games. So now go out east. The Atlantic leading the way is the Tampa Bay Lightning. They have 80 points in 55 games. Then the Florida Panthers, they got 79 points in 55 games. Then the Toronto Maple Leafs, they have 74 points in 55 games. Boston runs a fourth, 72 points in 56 games. And this is where it really tails off. Detroit's fifth with 54 points in 56 games. Then Buffalo, they have 44 points in 57 games for 6th. Ottawa, 7th, 43 points, 55 games. Then the Montreal Canadiens, they have 37 points, 56 games. The Atlantic, now the Metropolitan. Leading the way is the Carolina Hurricanes. They have 83 points in 56 games. Then the New York Rangers, they have 77 points in 56 games. Third place is the Pittsburgh Penguins. 77 points in 57 games. Washington Capitals. 69 points, 57 games, and there's a little bit of tail off. Fifth place is the Columbus Blue Jackets. They have 59 points, 56 games. New York Islanders, they have 50 points in 52 games. New Jersey Devils, they have 45 points in 56 games. And then 
the Philadelphia Flyers have 44 points and 55 games. So potential playoff matchups right now. If you look at West, you would have the Colorado Avalanche. They would be hosting the Nashville Predators. While the Calgary Flames, they would be hosting the uh, Dallas Stars, rematch from 2020. Then you have the Los Angeles Kings hosting the Vegas Golden Knights. And then you have the St. Louis Blues hosting the Minnesota Wild. So that has potential playoff matchups right now, but Edmonton is not too far behind. They have 1.0. And Anaheim is two points behind, but they have more games played. In the East, well, it would be the Carolina Hurricanes. They would be hosting the Washington Capitals, while the Tampa Bay Lightning would be hosting the Boston Bruins. And then you got the Florida Panthers hosting the Toronto Maple Leafs. And then the New York Rangers hosting the Pittsburgh Penguins. Those are the potential matchups. If you were to look at the standings right now when it comes to the Calgary Flames. So up next, we'll talk about the Stockton Heat Quick Hits. There's also a trade that we'll talk about now. So let's bring that up. So for Stockton Heat Quick Hits, how things are looking for our farm team in the American Rock League. Well, game 42. This happened on Sunday, February 20th, as the Stockton Heat were hosting the Bakersfield Condors. This was a 6 p.m. buck drop at the Stockton Arena. Stockton won this one, 7-4. Justin Kirkland and Luke Phillips each had two goals. Matthew Phillips had a goal and three assists. Connor Zari had a goal and assist. Connor Mackey, Glenn Godwin, and Jacob Belchie each have two assists. It's also I like that how Scott fought with Vincent the RNAs. Bakersfield actually outshot Stockton. 40 to 22 in this one. Dustin Wolf made 36 days in the win. So game 43, this is on Friday, February the 25th, as the Stockton Heat were on the road to take on the Abbotsford Canucks at the Abbotsford Center. 8 p.m. puck drop where the Abbotsford Heat used to play 10 years ago. And in that one, the Stockton Heat won that game 4 to 1. Jacob Pelche and Matthew Fields each had a goal and assist. Glenn Godwin had two assists. Byron Freeze and Alex Gallant each also had a goal. And Dustin Wolf made 25 saves. So that was game 43. Game 44 just happened on Sunday, February 27th. The Stockton Heat were taking on the Abbotsford Canucks again. This was a 5 p.m. bow truck at the Abbotsford Center. However, the Abbotsford Canucks won this one 6 2. It was Nick DeSimon and Luke Phillips each had a goal. Dustin Wolf. Only made 12 saves. Uh, Stockton actually outshot Abbotsford 36 to 18 in this one. And then a trade. And essentially, it was more of a minor trade. As the Calgary Flames did make another trade with the Montreal Canadiens, but this was not tired to fully massive trade. Essentially, this was a trade between the Lavelle Orquette and the Stockton Heat. As the Calgary Flames acquired goaltender Michael McNevin from the Montreal Canadiens. For future considerations, and then he got signed to the Stockton Heat. So the Stockton Heat pick up another goalie in Michael McNevin. I did not only I did only made a short on this video. I didn't make a full length video on my main channel, so you can take a look at that. So after the trade, there were a couple more games to talk about with the Stockton Heat. Game 45 this happened on Friday, March 4th, as the Big Freeze Connors were in Stockton again. This time Bakerfield Condors, they won this one 2 to 1 in overtime. This was an 8 p.m. puck drop stopped the arena. It was Lucio Valamacchi who actually scored his first of the season with the Heat. And then Brandon Perlini got the overtime winner. Also, note he took a slashing penalty in overtime first. So he definitely redeemed himself. And Dustin Wolf made 19 saves in the game. So that was game 45. Game 46, he stopped the Heat. We're now hosting the San Jose Barracuda, this is what they stopped in the arena, 7 p.m. puck drop. At the stop eight, they won this one, 4-3 in overtime. Luke Phillip, Emil Pedersen, and Yusuf Valimaki. He had a goal on this each. Walker Durer also had a goal. And also, Alex Galat fought with Marotana Onbiachi. Interesting with that, that was the only penalty in that game. And it was Yusuf Valimaki who scored the overtime winner. So, maybe Yusuf Valimaki is starting to pick up his stock. Right now at the Stockton Heat, and Dustin Wolf made 28 saves for Stockton. So the Stockton Heat, just like the Calgary Flames, they're also first in the Pacific Division in the American Hockey League, as they are 31, 9, 4, and 1 for 67 points, and first in the Pacific Division. So look at the quick stats 
pretty stock and heat. Matthew Phillips leads the way in 42 games. He has 20 goals, 28 assists for 48 points. Jacob Elche is second in 44 games. He has 16 goals, 25 assists, 41 points. Third in scoring is Glenn Godwin. In 42 games, he has 12 goals, 20 assists for 40 points. Fourth in scoring is Luke Phelps. He has 43 games, 17 goals, 13 assists for 30 points. And then rounding out the top five is Justin Kirkland. In 43 games, he has 14 goals, 13 assists for 27 points. And then when it comes to Dustin Wolf for the goal team, Dustin Wolf definitely leads the way in three games played. He has a 23-4-3 record. No over or zero losses. And he has a save percentage of 915. Or no, no, uh, the save percentage of 9.3, I should say, and the goals against the average of 2.33. But no shutouts, and then the Adam Warner is the other goalie. He's played in 15 games. He has 8.42 and 1. He has a save percentage of 8.95, and the goals against the average of 2.77, and no shutouts. And then the Michael McNevin, who's played 11 games at the Lavelle Rocket, he has a 4-4-1 record coming in. He has an 8-69 save percentage, a 4-4 goals against the average, but a one shutout. So uh, that is the look on the goalie and the stop to me when it comes to their quick hits. So now the last part of this episode, let's take a look ahead to the next six teams for the Calgary Flames. As well, what's up next for the stop to me? Well, game 55 will also be on Monday March the 7th, as the Calgary Flames will finally get to play the Empton Oilers at home. This will be a 7.30 puck drop at the Scotia Bank Seldom for a Battle of Alberta. This game was rescheduled from Monday, December the 27th. Game 56, this will be on Tuesday, March the 8th. Next night, the Calgary Flames will be hosting the Washington Capitals. So we'll get to take a look at Alexander Vetchkin and this chase of Wayne Gretzky's record. This will be a 7 p.m. puck drop. That just goes big sell on game 57. This is going to be a dandy. On Thursday, March the 10th, the Calgary Flames take on the dreaded Tampa Bay Lightning. And that will be a 7 p.m. puck drop at the Scotiabank Seldom. They've been the dreaded Tampa Bay Lightning for June 2004 reasons. And then game 58, this will happen the next, or Saturday, March the 12th, as the Calgary Flames will be hosting the Detroit Red Wings. And this game actually is a 5 p.m. Puck drop on Scotiabank Seldom. And then on game 59, on Sunday, March the 13th, the Calgary Flames go on the road as they will be taking on the Colorado Avalanche again. That will be a 6 p.m. puck drop at the Ball Arena. And then game 60, which will be next episode. Wednesday, March the 16th, the Calgary Flames will come back home as they'll be hosting the New Jersey Devils. That will be an 8 p.m. puck drop. Then, so those are the next six games for the Calgary Flames. Definitely looking forward to some more tough opponents. Well, Edmonton's always tough. Then you got Tampa Bay Lightning and the Colorado Avalanche. Again, do we have another dandy for a second game against Colorado Avalanche? We'll see. Now when it comes to the Stockton Heat, they're going to have four games in the next episode. Game 47, this will be on Wednesday, March the 9th, as the Stockton Heat will be hosting the San Diego goals, 7.30 p.m. puck drop. Game 48, this will be on Friday, March 11th. The Stockton Heat will be on the road. Take on the San Jose Barracuda. That will be an 8.30 p.m. puck drop at the SAP Center. Game 49, this will be on Saturday, March 12th. Stockton Heat will be taking on the San Jose Barracuda again in San Jose. San... This will be at the SAP Center. And then Game 17, this will be that makeup game on Monday, March the 4th as the Stockton Heat will be hosting the Bakersfield Condors. That will be a 7.30 p.m. puck drop. That game was rescheduled from Wednesday, December 1st, so that will get my games back in line with the games on schedule and the games with the Stockton Heat. So, yeah, I'm going to say the Calgary Flames. Going back to what I said at the top of the episode, I think it is time that we should be considered Stanley Cup contenders, at least the top five right now. If I were to give you my top five for Stanley Cup contenders right now, I still have to give it to the Tampa Bay Lane, Florida Panthers, Carolina Hurricanes, that three out east, then the Colorado Avalanche, and the Calgary Flames. I think right now they've earned themselves to be in that conversation. 
And that's getting me a little excited about Octave at the same time, because I've seen this movie before, especially three years ago. But I think I trust Daryl Sutter and what he is doing with the Calgary Flames right now. So anyways, I'd like to say, if you want to follow along this Calgary sports fan's journey, home the Flames, Saban, Roughnecks, and Stampeders, and mostly do talk Calgary sports on my each channel, where I recap games and stories and that, but I also do a variety of non-sports content, which I haven't had much time to do any of that. But I do have personal vlogs at Tampa Comedy, and also do share experiences on the road or a sport event, and do some vlogging to go, which I do have a vlog in a go that I did do the other day, that I still need to make it and upload it. That that's all sounds like be interesting to watch. To follow along with this Calgary sports fan's journey. You know you do, just uh, make sure you hit like subscribe. And also my other social links down in the description below. And of course I have my second channel in Brett Hornby Shorts. Where I exclusively put my short form content on that channel. So I appreciate like subscribe both here on my main channel as well as my second channel. So I'm going to say Go Flames Go, let's continue staying Stanley Cup contenders. I can at least somewhat dream softly that next July we celebrate a Stanley Cup victory, but there's still a long ways to go. But things are looking good right now that the Red Mile should be up and jumping again, just like 18 years ago. 18 years ago, wow. The Red Mile, the 2004 Calgary Flames playoff run, it can go to the Red Mile and have a drink right now if it was a person. Time's definitely going by, man, I'm So I just want to say thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.